It's time for Voices from the Garden, a series that celebrates and explores an intrinsic mix of life lessons, faith stories, and glorious gardening adventures, told by those who experience them in their own words, exclusively on the Rose Chat Podcast. Try Haven Brand Soil Conditioners, providing generations of gardeners with a truly all-natural alternative to chemical fertilizers with their line of composted manure and alfalfa teas. Easy to brew and use on all indoor and outdoor plants. Find them online at manuretea.com. Well, hello everyone. I'm coming to you today from sunny San Diego, California. I'm at the American Rose Society National Convention. And right now I'm sitting with a great friend to all rose lovers, Wendy Tilly. Wendy has an online garden shop, therosegardener.com, where you can buy tools, decor, and the best rose pruning gloves around. Not to mention my favorite pruners, the Barnells. Recently, Wendy relocated from the Atlanta area to the Portland area. She's with us to talk about moving a rose garden across the country. Hey, Wendy, how are you doing? Hi, Teresa. It's great to be here with you. So how many roses did you grow in Atlanta? Um, according to my count, around 400. According to my husband's, 300. I count better. Uh, my husband says that when it comes to counting roses, that my... My, my numbering system just doesn't add up. Mine says Floribunda don't count. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm going to have to work that into my measurements for sure. So, how many roses did you move? Well, we were supposed to move 75. Somehow, by the time I got out here, there were 135. I don't know how that happened. It's another math problem. Roses are just surrounded by math problems. <laughs> oh, yes. So now um, I have planted 135. And another math uh, interesting problem arose. 35 materialized. Oh, propagation or Apparently, something? Apparently, yeah. Something. Yeah, the husband came out and brought a few more with him. A few, like 35. Wow. So now this was a big project by any standard, and I'm just wondering, when you got out to the Portland area, what was the garden beds like? Was it already ready for your roses to go in, or were there some things you had to do? We had to do a lot. The woman that owned the house before me did have roses. The soil they were in was closer to cement than it was to soil, and it had cracks in it. I do not know how the roses were growing, but they were, a few of them. Yeah, roses are a little more resilient than we give them credit for sure. Uh, it, it goes to show that they have survived 5,000 years for a reason. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. So what did you do to give them a little bit better bed to sleep in at night? Okay. Um, my husband was not yet out to the Portland area. He was still in the Atlanta area taking care of his rose um, business. And so I was left with figuring out how to plant all these roses in cement. So we had someone who was mowing the lawn, and I talked to him about having his guys come out on a Saturday or several and plant my roses with me. And I was with them every step of the way. They brought shovels, but more importantly, they brought pickaxes. So they'd, had, they'd encountered this problem before? Oh, yes. Yes. So what contributes to this cement? Um, Portland, everyone thinks the Portland area, and I actually live in Vancouver, Washington, 15 minutes from Portland. Um, everyone thinks it's really wet, and it is in the winter, but in the summer it's pretty much a drought situation. We did not have rain from the beginning of June at all until now in October, and even then just some mists. So no rain and only what I could irrigate. Um, and the soil was, it's kind of a clay loam. Mm -hmm. So it's a different clay than in Georgia, but it's still clay. So you're a, you're a part of a big experiment here. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see that they're growing or oh, have yeah. you seen big changes? Yeah, when I first came out, they were all in pots. And my husband kept saying, 
I'll plant them. He'll plant them. He didn't want me to plant them. So I watered the pots, and it got hotter and hotter and hotter. And I don't know if your listeners have experienced this, but roses in pots, the pots heat up, and then some of the rose canes will actually turn a sickly yellow color. Mm -hmm. And that was what was happening. And I said to my husband, I've got to get these planted. And so I started talking to people to help me. And I found from the Rose Society, the local Rose Society, the place to get the soil. And essentially what they plant in is pure aged cow man uh, horse manure. Horse manure. Yeah. And it is beautiful. Um, it just it looks like beautiful soil. It has no smell. Um, you can't really tell it's manure. And so we used a whole lot of that, mixed some of the clay in, and then put a, got rid of about two-thirds of it, and then put the rest of this really good soil in, which came from a farm, stables, by the way. And um, my husband said, and he's the real Rosarian, um, he said, raise them up. So I raised them up. Well, with no rain and me watering them, they kind of sunk. <laughs> so by the time he finally got out, they almost looked level with the soil, maybe an inch or two higher. So my journey in rose planting was not over. <laughs> he had ideas. He had, yeah. But I kind of stayed away so I wouldn't be involved in his ideas. Um, so what he did, and, and this is probably real important if you live in any kind of really... Um, wet area when it's wet in the winter. If it's wet in the winter and it stays wet, the roots stay in water. Mm -hmm. And the roses don't like that. Probably not many plants would like that. So what he did is all these roses that I planted in these lovely holes, he took four shovels all around them, raised the, root, the rose up so the roots are kind of still where they were, and shoved in a few shovels full of more good soil until now the roses are essentially two to three inches planted into the original soil level and then the rest of it is over top and all kinds of good soil all around it and then he mulched it so he made some really good raised beds so i guess it's probably one to two landscape timbers high mm -hmm. with what he did whereas mine was probably a half of a landscape mm -hmm. timber high so I have to admit they do look a little better. <laughs> and yeah. they're going to like that, yeah. I think. But they were so happy that they were out of the pots. They were really happy. Now, those, those roses with the yellow canes, I had to put some of them in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So they didn't go in the ground. They went in a shady area. If you have a rose that's struggling, if you put it in a shady area, it gives it a little more time to recover. People think they want the sun, but you... You really don't want them to bloom. You want them to work on the yeah, other parts of growing, so like roots and stuff like that. Um, and he I actually planted them in smaller pots. He took them out of, I think they were in, some of them were in seven-gallon pots, and he put them back in three-gallon pots, and he, of course, pruned them down and put them in the shade, which was where my hospital mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit they are looking a little better, Mm -hmm. And then he took the real young ones out and put them back in pots, saying I shouldn't have planted them. <laughs> so, you know, you win some, you lose oh, some. Oh, that's so <laughs> true. It is, a, it is a journey. It's a journey. Well, we're excited to hear um, what's, um, what, how this is all going to turn out. I think you're going to have a ton of blooms before very long. I'm going to have to send you some pictures. Yes, I would enjoy seeing those, and I'm sure we get those on Facebook or something so our listeners can uh, see them too. Now, before I let you go, you are here with all your wonderful um, gifts for rose gardeners, like those great gloves and, and pruners and that kind of thing. But I saw some new things out there. Why don't you tell us about that? Okay. Well, I have a couple new things. Um, you know, if you travel around a lot, you have some things you miss from home. So I have some vases that are actually flat. They're an acrylic. They are basically flat like an envelope. Mm -hmm. You put water in them and they are like a brown paper bag. They have a, a nice solid base and you can put your flowers, your roses or anything like that in them. And they're about 
uh, 10 or 11 inches high in all different kinds of patterns. And I have to confess, I've only got a few of the patterns online because I've been traveling for these shows, but I promise I'll put some of the new patterns on. And the other thing I promise I will put on is the other thing that you saw, Teresa, and that is the lanterns. The lanterns are really kind of like luminary size, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they also come flat. You fill them up with water, and they come with these tea lights that are water activated. So you get four small um, vases, about, what, about six inches high, and you can put your old garden roses in it if you want to use it as a vase, or you can use them as lanterns with the little lights that come with them. All kinds of cute patterns. I have to confess, the two most popular, and I, I think I have both of them that I use in my house. One is a Tiffany Dragonfly, and one is Tiffany Magnolia. But we have all kinds of other things. A, a surprise popular one is the Octavase. It's an octopus. And then we have um, a stained glass vase that also comes in the luminary form. So we have a lot of different patterns, and I promise I will get them up online, um, both in the vases and in the lanterns. And something else we have um, with our cushions also to be put online, these, these things are really brand new, um, are Dottie and Buzz. Um, you may have seen our kneeling cushions online if you've been to the website, but now we have Dottie, who is a ladybug cushion, and Buzz is, you guessed it, a bee. And they're adorable. And they're a little smaller than a regular cushion, so kids would delight in them. There'd be something that you could have them put their cushion in front of the TV and say, sit on your cushion, and they might stay. Just because it's so cute. Just because it's cute, and it's <laughs> theirs. So those will be online. And, um, you know, we have a lot of other things you can kind of explore. And, uh, you know, the, the old standbys, like Teresa said, are still there, the gloves and the pruners, and our, our label system, the mm -hmm. Harlan labels are yes. there. I have a ton of those. They pepper my garden and, and show everyone just what they're looking at. Oh, that's good. We're going to see some um, on the tours, too. Oh, good. The good. new president of ARS, Bob Martin has a yard full of them also. Oh, good. In good. the other color from what you have, Teresa. Oh, good. I want to see them. Yeah. Well, Wendy, thanks for, for joining me today. And, and it's great to hear how uh, things are going out in your new place. And we look forward to pictures. And uh, again, tell our listeners your website. My website is www.therosegardener.com. Thanks for listening to today's broadcast of Voices from the Garden, an exclusive story series celebrating the human experience in the garden exclusively on the Rose Chat podcast. If you have a story to tell, email us at grow at rosechat.info. Voices from the Garden is a production of the Rose Chat Media Group, Birmingham, Alabama.